In this video, I'm going to find out whether AI can really improve your squash. I've got four free AI platforms, four serious squash questions, and two silly ones. Now, this video is a summary of a much longer live recording. You can see it up here. Link is in the text description. So let's cut to the chase. Yes. AI can help you improve your squash. I was impressed with all four of the platforms, which by the way were ChatGPT, Bard, Bing, and Perplexity. The presentation varies, and Perplexity did a really good job of showing you the sources it used. Which leads us on to two caveats. The first one is to understand that these AI platforms are not generating the content from their own intelligence. They're rewording, reformatting information that has already been fed into them via web pages, video transcripts, books, and other sources. They're very, very good at rewording what has already been created. Secondly, all the platforms do something the experts call hallucinate, which is a polite way of saying they basically lie or invent information. And we're gonna see some funny examples of that in the silly questions in a moment. For this video, I'm only going to be using one of the serious questions. If you wanna see the other three, you'll need to check out the live recording. Now, the question I'm going to use is, what's the best way to improve my squash? Let's see the results. Okay then, so let's go ahead and look at what the answers were. What's the best way to improve my squash? This is from Jack Chat GPT. For fitness training, okay, no, no denying that fitness training will be good. Uh, skill development, working on your basic strokes. Yeah, I quite like that, develop your footwork. Game strategy, learn to control the pace of the game, all of these kind of things. Match play, play against um, opponents of varying skill levels. Now that's that's good. The previous one I felt has been uh, the kind of advice that water is wet. Uh, work on your basic strokes, but how do I work on my basic strokes? Focus on your fitness, well, how do I do that? You know, Learn to control the game, how do I learn to control the game? I'm not saying that these are, this is bad advice. What I'm saying is it's very generic and it's not very specific. But here is something that is specific. Play regularly against opponents of varying skill levels. You can control that, you can do that. And it explains why. This will expose you to different playing styles and help you adapt to different situations. Good, participate in tournaments, analyze your own matches uh, and learn from your mistakes. Now, I'm certainly, I cer certainly support the idea of players videoing themselves and analyzing them, but Sometimes it's hard for people to know what to do. So, okay, uh, again, water is wet, develop mental resi resilience. How do I do that? Coaching, consider taking lessons from a qualified squash coach. Yeah, okay, I like that. Equipment, ensure your equipment is good. Okay, fine. Rest and recovery. So certainly not bad answers, but very, very generic. Let's move over to perplexity. All right, now the first thing that we want to talk about is these images here. Squash, uh, squash, uh, AI platforms are not very good at differentiating between squash, the sport, and squash, the vegetable. So sometimes they really have some funny images. So this is perplexity. Now I don't know where perplexity is getting its information from. It might be from ChatGPT anyway. But as I said earlier, I like the way perplexity presents the information. You can see here where it's got its information. So it's got from the squash company, squash point, how, uh, how it squash, how it squash, okay. Uh, and then two more, and if I click here, you'll see one is from Reddit and one is my video. So I'm quite happy about that. Uh, play against people with different standards. That's good. All right, I like that. And that comes from, you can see here that it's the second reference. All right, good. Work on your condition. So that's fitness, keep it straight. Okay, there, there's specific advice. Uh, mainly playing a straight grain to create basic pattern and open opportunities. Take the ball to the back, so very specific. So perplexity does a good job of being specific. Hitting the ball where you're, the opponent is not. And it's a little bit kind of you know silly to say that. Isn't that obvious? It is, but lots of times people do hit the ball back to their opponent. Use deception good but doesn't say how but it's only a basic guide hit winning shots oh my gosh wish i'd thought of that hit the hit a winner take lessons all right so i'm pretty happy with 
the way this has responded. I felt that these answers have been more specific, you know, different standards, keep it straight, hit it to the back, good quality advice. Moving on to Bard. So Bard was the same question. Uh, master the fundamentals, okay? Before delving into advanced techniques, ensure you have a solid grasp of the basics. Practice proper grips, stance, and swing mechanics. It's good. Now, it doesn't know my level. So this is a good way to make sure that instead of assuming that I've got a certain level, make sure that I've got the basics right. Practice regularly. It's the first one who's talked about practice. That's an important aspect. Consistent practice is crucial. Dedicate time each week to drills. Good. Play against varying opponents, uh, opponents of varying skills. So all three have said that, and I highly recommend that. That is definitely good. Seek feedback from experienced players and coaches. First one who said seek feedback from players. I like that. Work on your fitness and agility. Okay, well, common, not common sense, but it is, in, it is pretty obvious, really. Men develop mental toughness. Visualize success to strengthen your mental focus and resilience. I do like it. Learn from your mistakes. Analyze your matches. Doesn't say specifically video, but you don't have to have video. Watch professional matches. It's good. I do like it. I do like how Bard has uh, given me some very specific things. Um, it doesn't tell me where he got it. Whereas here, and it's not because I've got one of my videos here. I like how it's got those things. So if you say to yourself, yeah, I'd like, I like to explore that idea a little bit more, it, it, you know, it makes it easy because you can just click on it and it will take you to that point. And I think that that's important, that we do want the answers, but we also would like to know where those answers came from and can I explore it a little bit more. Now let's look at a couple of the hallucinations I mentioned earlier. So the first one we're going to see is... Um, According to according to perplexity, Jahangir Khan dominated the sport, which he did for a, a certain period of time. But for 25 years, and this is completely false. He didn't dominate for 25 years, maybe 10, nine years, or something like that. So you know, if you're if you're doing a research paper, this is this is false. And the next funny one that we've got is this is from Bard. Squash is the oldest racket sport in the world, which is 100% false. There was rackets before that, which is the forefather of squash. And there was real tennis that was before that. And okay. It is believed to have originated in Egypt over 5,000 years ago. Okay, it's a big stretch, but I have read that some people believe that the Egyptians were hitting balls or something probably cloth wrapped around something else against walls 2,000 years ago, but certainly not squash. One last thing I want to do that's not included in the long live recording is I wanted to try and ask it some silly questions. And when I mean silly, I mean obscure questions to see how it responds. And I only did this with ChatGPT. So here's the first question. When playing squash, should the ball hit the eighth or the ninth main string? Now, I mean, that is just absolutely silly. You don't need to worry about that. But it actually gave a really good answer. It said, hitting the ball on the eighth or ninth string of the racket is generally considered a good point of contact. And it is. If you've got like 16 or 18 main strings, the eighth and ninth is the center. And it's talk about the sweet spot. And I was like, okay, good, good answer. So then I said, okay, let me answer another, ask another question. Why shouldn't I use topspin in squash? Because you often see beginners thinking that they've seen tennis players and they think, right, I'm going to do the same as tennis players. And it's a bad idea. I'll write an article about that soon. And again, chat GPT gave me some pretty good answers. So now I'm getting a little bit frustrated because I'm thinking I'm trying to catch it out. I'm trying to trick it. And it's, you know, it's, it's not happening. So then I said, is bouncing the ball before serving a good, in squash, a good way to distract your opponent, trying to see if I can like get it to say, yeah, you know, be nasty. But no, it was fine. It does say deliberately using excessive and erratic bouncing as a tactic, tactic to distract your opponent should be considered unsportsmanlike conduct and is generally discouraged. Great answer. So for the final one, I said, right, is a 36 shot rally in squash much better than a 34 shot rally? Total rubbish. The length of a rally in squash is not necessarily a straightforward measure of its quality or effectiveness. I can't 
beat it. It's really, it's giving me really, really good answers. So now we're going to do one live one. This is a live one. I did this earlier, but this is a live one. And this is, please invent a new shot in squash. Explain it clearly. All right, are you ready? Da 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 da. The spiral slice. The spiral slice is a deceptive shot designed to surprise an opponent with its unique spin and trajectory. Here's how it works. Set up. No, 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 no. I'm going to let you read this. But slightly choke up on the handle for better control. Backswing if you're preparing for a regular drive or straight shot. Contact point. Instead of hitting the ball with a flat perpendicular racket face, the angle of the racket is ever so slightly brushed against the outside of the ball. Okay, the outside of the ball if it's forehand. This creates a side spin. Follow through. After contact in the ball, continue the racket swing in a circular motion like slicing through the air in a spiral pattern. This is actually it's not a new shot. It's it's a shot that you might play against the side wall. You you would you could either hit it in the 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 the, the inside of the ball, which helps it go tight. All right, okay, there we go. But it's done a, a pretty good job. I'm smiling, I'm thinking, wow, this is super cool. If you said to a real person, invent a new shot, I'd be like, yeah, I don't know, but it's done it. Wow, it's going to change the world. This is. So, do I think AI can help improve people squash? Absolutely. If you've got a bunch of questions that you need to ask, instead of just going to the internet and seeing a list of results and then visiting all of those pages and reading, AI gives you the answers directly. So that's a fantastic research. Will it replace coaching? Absolutely not. Well, not in the short term anyway. Who knows what AI will be able to do in the future. But if you really want to improve, you've got to get on court, you've got to do the work, preferably with coaching. Remember though, don't believe everything it says. But maybe that's true of real people anyway. Well, that was fun. If you'd like me to do this again, but with some other questions, let me know in the comments. If you want to learn how to get the ball out of the back corners, watch this video and click this link if you want to learn more about my video analysis service. And as always, do something every single day to improve your squash. See ya.